Now, I like this heart because you can take it apart into lots of different pieces and see all the details really well. So first thing we're going to look at is the outer structures. And you'll notice that the heart is sitting on something. Okay, so remember the flat part of the heart is the base. It's this part right here. The point is the apex. And notice that it has this white layer. This has been cut off. This is your fibrous pericardium with your parietal serous pericardium on the inside. So this is all fibrous pericardium here. This would be your parietal serous pericardium on this side. Fibrous pericardium and the visceral serous per I mean the parietal serous pericardium are fused into one layer. So it's very hard to kind of distinguish those. On the surface of the heart you'd have the epicardium. Now on this heart we can look at some layers nicely, more layers of the heart. So if we take that off we can actually look at the wall of the heart. Okay, so this would be your epicardium out here. This thick layer, this dark red thick layer here is going to be your myocardium. And then the inner layer of the heart, that thin pink layer, is going to be your endocardium. Epicardium, myocardium, endocardium. And make sure you look at those layers on the heart, on the wet heart, because you can see those as well. This thing right here, if you remember from 141, is the thymus gland. Sits on the heart, present in children and young adults, but absent in most older adults. Again, you can see the cut edge of the pericardium, the outer pericardium there. Pulmonary trunk is going to come up and split into your pulmonary arteries. So this would be left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery. That's taking blood out of the right ventricle, shuttling it to the lungs where it's going to pick up oxygen. It'll come back from the lungs through the pulmonary veins after it's been oxygenated. Left pulmonary veins, right pulmonary veins. Once it's been oxygenated, it'll come into the left atrium, go into the left ventricle, and be sent out through the aorta. Ascending aorta, aortic arch, descending aorta behind the heart. You can't really see much of that. There's descending. As it comes through the aorta, it's going to give off blood to the right and left coronary arteries, and we'll look at those more in a second. It's also, once it reaches the arch, going to go through your three main branches off the aortic arch. One, two, three. I don't know if you could see that. One, two, three. Brachiocephalic artery. Left common carotid artery. Left subclavian artery. One, two, three. Remember, brachiocephalic trunk is going to come up and split into right common carotid artery and right subclavian artery, and we'll look at that in a minute. So brachiocephalic trunk, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery. Now when blood returns from the system coming to the right atrium, it's going to come in from the top of the body through your right and left brachiocephalic veins and dump into the superior vena cava, which is right here. From the lower half of the body, it will enter the heart through the inferior vena cava, which is right there. You can see the inferior vena cava coming up through the diaphragm right here, through the caval hiatus. Here's your right auricle, left auricle. If we take those off, you can see the inside of the chambers, the atria. Here's your right atrium. Now, right atrium is unique. It has several things that enter it, superior and inferior vena cava, of course, superior and inferior. Also, the opening of the coronary sinus, which is right there. And it has some special muscles called pectinate muscles. 
and that's these muscles right here. The left atrium does not have pectinate muscles. It's also got a structure called the crista terminalis, which is basically the demarcation point between the pectinate muscles and the smooth part of the atrium. It's also going to have part of your uh, electrical conduction system in there. And if you look deep into the heart, which I'm not sure if you guys can, if it'll show up on video, but there's a number one on it right here in this picture. And you can see it's like a circle. It's kind of white. That's your fossa ovale. It, when you were in utero, it was a hole between your atria called the foramen ovale in the, in the infant. But in the adult, it's just a scar, and it's called the fossa ovale. and has that little lip around it. And you can see the opening for the inferior vena cava there. Now, all of those structures are unique to the right atrium. The left atrium really has none of those. It's just a space where the pulmonary veins empty blood. We'll take off the walls of the ventricle. And we can see right ventricle, left ventricle. You can see your papillary muscles with your corda tendinae attached. So these would be the corda tendinae from your mitral valve. And in the right ventricle, you'd have corda tendinae from your tricuspid valve. The little muscle folds in the ventricles that are not papillary muscles are called trabeculae carniae. And they're very evident here on this model and on the wet tissue. Now we can take this top portion of the heart off and look at the coronary artery system so, and the valves. So here's your aorta, here's your aortic valve, here's your pulmonary trunk, with the pulmonary valve. And coming right off of the ascending aorta, you can see one, two branches. These are your right and left coronary arteries. Notice the left coronary artery is very short and immediately branches into one, two branches. The right coronary artery travels a little bit between the atrium and the ventricle before it gives off a branch that's marginal. Okay, so right coronary artery, you can follow that around. It gives off the marginal artery here. And then, of course, continues around to the back and gives off posterior interventricular artery. On the left side, we have left coronary artery here going to branch and go to the front of the heart and give off anterior interventricular artery. And its other branch will go around to the back side as circumflex artery. So this is all circumflex artery here. Now the veins running with these arteries, remember on the front you have your anterior interventricular artery and your great cardiac vein in blue. And great cardiac vein is going to go all the way around and empty into the coronary sinus. Running with your marginal artery, you have your small cardiac vein, which again is going to dump into the main venous system and end up in the coronary sinus. If we flip this over, you can see your posterior interventricular artery running down the base of the heart with your middle cardiac vein. Middle cardiac vein takes blood up, dumps it into the coronary sinus. You can see the coronary sinus there. This right here is going to be your tricuspid valve. This is your bicuspid valve, right, left. So these are those cusps that will be anchored by the corda tendinae, anchored down. And I think, let's put this heart back together. And I think that's pretty much it for this one. Okay, so just quick review then now, now that I have that back together. You have right auricle, underneath would be right atrium. Right ventricle, left ventricle, left auricle with left atrium underneath. Anterior interventricular artery with the great cardiac vein. Marginal artery with the small cardiac vein. 
pulmonary trunk, right or left pulmonary artery, right pulmonary artery, superior vena cava, left, I mean right, left brachiocephalic vein, ascending aorta, aortic arch, brachiocephalic artery, left common carotid artery, left subclavian artery, cut edge of the pericardium, visceral pericardium, epicardium on the outside of the heart, descending aorta, superior vena cava, inferior and superior right pulmonary veins, inferior and superior left pulmonary veins, left atrium, right atrium, inferior vena cava, coronary sinus, posterior interventricular artery, and middle cardiac vein. Okay, moving on.